www.seancardavillis.co.ke Seven Russian swimmers and three rowers have been banned from competing at the Rio Olympic Games by their sports governing bodies. Swimming's FINA and rowing's FISA took action after the International Olympic Committee let sports federations decide if athletes should miss the Games. Here's BBC Sport with more details. Three of the seven that FINA, the governing body, have, have ruled ineligible. Three of them were linked to allegations in the independent report of, and, regarding the major cover-up of doping within Russia. Four of them, the other four, including Yulia Efimova, who is the reigning 100-metre breaststroke champion, they have previously served doping bans, so they won't be allowed to compete. However, at the Olympics, you will have other competitors who have served doping bans and have been sanctioned and, and, have, and have now back competing. They will still be there. They will be allowed to compete. It's only Russians who have had doping bans who won't be allowed to compete. So it would just seem to be a, a complete inconsistency there. Well, Swimming's world governing body, FINA, have been the first to act following the decision of the International Olympic Committee not to impose a total ban on Russia competing. They've left it up to each individual sport to decide instead. And the president of the Russian Olympic Committee, Alexander Zukov, admits that more Russians could now be banned from the Games. We are now checking the lists. Each federation is studying the whole doping history of all Russian athletes who were included in our team's application. I believe in the near future we will have all the information. I said there were eight athletes with doping histories, but even now it is obvious that there are more. We believe, and this is our principal position, that clean athletes should take part in the Olympic Games, that there should be no collective responsibility, only personal ones. Those who really doped, the professionals, the trainers, should be punished. Those who are never mixed up in it should take part in the Olympic Games. Online betting firm Sportpesa has become the first Kenyan company to sponsor an English Premier League club and the firm will have its name and company logo on Hull City's home, away and third shirts for the next three seasons, according to information on the club's website. England manager Sam Allardyce says his new job will be the greatest challenge of his career. In his first news conference since taking charge of the national side, Allardyce said man management was his biggest asset and he added that he'll try to enjoy the job. Not for me. I'm hardened over many, many years. You, you toughen yourself uh, for whatever job you take because you take the good with the bad. Otherwise you don't do it. Don't bother. So I'm here because I, I, I want to be. I think I'm here because I want the challenge. I'm here, uh, I'm here because I think I can make the team better and, uh, and I think I'm tough enough to take it. So uh, bring it on, eh, lads? Over the last few days, uh, not only the goodwill messages I've uh, had from friends and people that I know uh, in and outside the game, but also the nation as a whole. And I think that uh, for me, um, that gives me a very warm feeling about taking up this uh, this new position today and obviously very proud. I think the bonding of the team is exceptionally important and why we're all together um, are trying to create a good team spirit and, and have some fun. You know, the game of football is to be enjoyed and and, and, and I've enjoyed my life in the game. So as the, as the pinnacle of my career, which this job is, I want to enjoy this the most. In cricket, England thrashed Pakistan by 330 runs in the second test at Old Trafford to level the four-match series at 1-1. Pakistan were bowled out for 234 after Alistair Cook 76 not out and Joe Root 71 not out helped England declare on 173 for one to set a target of 565 and James Anderson and Chris Wokes took 3 for 41 and Mohan Ali 3 for 88 as Pakistan lost their last six wickets for 89 runs to lose on the fourth day. Afterwards, Cook spoke to BBC Sport. Here he comes now, bowls to Mohamed Amir, who's going to be caught a mid-off. Broad takes the catch and England win the match by 330 runs. It's a handsome victory. They've levelled the series and they've won the match in four days. You know, it's quite nice to bounce back and play like we did over four days here and, um, yeah, it's uh, a pleasing. When you play like this and, and beat a team so handsomely, I think it's the fifth highest in terms of runs that ever that England have, have beaten somebody by. Do you then look back at Lords and say, God, see, that makes it even worse, or do you just completely consign that to the bin? Well, you have to consign it to the bin. I mean, a few lessons learned, and I think we you know, we spoke about it before the game. It'd be quite a good test of where we're, where we're at as a team as a batting unit of you know, how we're going to play obviously Yassir and their, their three left armers and clearly it was a good toss to win um, and we got ahead of the game and we stayed ahead of it Sean Cardavillis The Voice of Sport